So in this video, we'll be talking about routing algorithms. And in the subsequent two videos, we'll talk about link state algorithms and distance vector algorithms. And for the link state algorithm, we'll be talking about Dijkstra's algorithm. But first, let's try to understand what is a routing algorithm and how routing is related to forwarding. Now, every node or the network layer of every node has two parts. The first part is the routing algorithm and the other is the local forwarding table. Now, each and every node has this, and I'm just blown up one of those nodes to show how the routing algorithm and the forwarding table interact with each other. So what does the routing algorithm do? The routing algorithm determines the end-to-end -end path through the network. That is, how to reach from this particular node to any other node in the network. Now, once the routing algorithm executes at a node, what it does is it populates a local forwarding table at the node. Now, what is forwarding? Now, forwarding is the physical process of moving a packet from a node's input interface to a node's output interface. So let's look at this particular node in for which the routing algorithm and the local forwarding table have been magnified. Now, you can see that there is a packet that is arriving at the input interface of this node. And there are three output interfaces for, from, for this node marked as one, two, and three. So any packet that arrives at this node has to leave through one, two, and three. So that is what the routing algorithm is going to do. It's going to tell this particular node which packets should go along link three, which should go along link two, and which should go along link one. So once the routing algorithm runs, it's going to determine the following. That is for this address range, which is marked in the table as address range one, send all those packets which are destined for address range one along output link three. For the packets which are destined for address ranges two and three, send it along link two. And for all other addresses, send it along link one. So this is routing and forwarding and how they interact with each other. So once again, what does forwarding do? It is a forwarding table that determines the local forwarding action at every router. So now that we have an idea of what a routing algorithm does, the, the, the thing to understand next is whether this routing algorithm requires global information or is it decentralized. Another important question that we need to answer is whether this routing algorithm is static or whether is it is dynamic. Now let's first try to understand what is a global, <clears throat> whether routing algorithm requires global information or, with, or whether it is decentralized. Now, global, requiring global information means that all routers have an idea of the entire network or the entire topology. That is how the link costs vary for each and every link in the network. This is what link state algorithms work upon. That is all this link state that how, what is the cost of each and every link in the network is collected. And using this entire information at a centralized location, the task of finding the paths from different nodes to the different to the other nodes in the network is carried out. The other approach is decentralized. Now you understand that for for a globe for a centralized algorithm which collects global information, the the biggest hurdle is collecting all this information. So in a decentralized approach, what every router does is every router just knows the cost to its physically connected neighbors. And then through an iterative process of exchanging information with its neighbors, it collects information of all the other nodes and all the other links in the network and uses this to locally determine what should be its forwarding. And these classes of algorithms are decentralized and the algorithm that we will study is the distance vector algorithm. The second question is whether a routing algorithm is static or dynamic. In reality, all algorithms are going to have some level of dynamicity. That is, they are going to change over time. But when we say that a routing algorithm is static, what it means is the routes calculated by this algorithm change slowly over time. In comparison, a dynamic routing algorithm changes way more quickly. That is, periodically the link costs are updated and based on this changes to the link cost, the algorithm computes what are the new routes to be taken to the different destinations. And so with this, we'll conclude this lecture. And in the next lecture, we'll talk about Dijkstra's algorithm.